Welcome back to What RT Noobs for General Disturbance. We've got two great videos or great replays for you today. You're looking at the Object 261, which is the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Steps. And this one is under the command of the Base Man from Hell. Yes, he's in operation again in an RT. And he's in a team with another Object 261. So this should be fun. Well, you know the base man's been playing a lot of tanks recently, even playing light tanks. But uh, there's nothing, that's not a problem for him because he's actually a very skilled player on both RT and light tanks as well. In fact, just about any tank. And, oh, no, that's not a good sign when you see an EBR-105 trying to get early spots by moving through the battlefield. We might get spotted as we're moving over. Well, base man's decided to go straight to the aim. And he's got a nice target to go for straight away. It's a hash bomb. Yes, we don't call it the other word, mainly because we actually do know what it was originally designed to fire. Yes, the other one's a bit... It's a bit, um, well, not rude, but it's, it's not exactly what we would want to expose our children to by saying that. You don't want uh, four-year-olds using a four-letter word. Anyway, <laughs> what we've got here is an 18-centimeter howitzer which actually, I believe, was a naval gun originally, mounted on a hull that was originally from an IS-7. This was a design that was put forward. Rounds out. Looks good. Beautiful shot. That was a lovely shot there. 4.15. He managed to get and some stun assist as well. Now, as I go back through the stats again, 18 centimeter capable of doing 800 alpha, 45 millimeters of pen with 9.5 meters burst radius with a stun duration of between 11.6 and 29 rounds out. Oh, he hit the hash bar on this time. Yes, he definitely hit him. Normally, that might have been a pen if it actually hit the, uh, the, the turret because the shielding around the gun itself is very, very thin indeed. But on this occasion, he didn't get it. Both sides have got EBR-105, so neither side has a really big advantage, but that's another accurate hit. 423 on the units, 1516. Notice how he's actually playing to his strengths by moving to get the support of his teammates, as um, the majority of his teammates are actually over this end of the map at the moment. He's much better off over here than he is over the far side. If he'd actually gone to the southeast corner of the map, he probably would have been dead by now because the enemy has occupied that area. So he's now looking for a target. He's found one, a 60 TP. Probably not a great shot from this angle. He's changing his position. In fact, he's now looking at the enemy tank over on the far east side. Okay, he's checking for one. He's found an STB. Now they're fairly thin on armor. He got a bit of a rescue bloom there, but he's going for it. Rounds out, looks good. He gets a splash, 136. And he got some stun assist when the STB was taken out. So that shell did actually effectively remove one of the enemy guns. Okay, that unit's 1516. That's the same one he hit earlier. And he's moving in. Meanwhile, we've got a Centurion Action 10. He's also moving very fast and we're not fully reloaded yet. Standard reload is 30.68 seconds. But the EBR suddenly come to a stop and he did take some splash damage. 34 hit points. And again, he's playing to his strengths. He's moving around the map to keep some distance between him and the enemy tanks so they can't take him out and he can continue to support his teammates. Now this was based on the IS-7 hull, which was designed 1947. There were three different types of Object 261 that was originally uh, designed. The first one was to have a 152mm gun in a casement, a closed casement. The second one of 261-2 was to have an open 152mm howitzer. And the third one, of course, is this version with a open 18cm. Now these rocks do actually present a bit of a problem 
as they narrow your effectiveness, your fields of fire. The field of fire for this RT is only five degrees either side of the centre line. He hasn't launched his shell yet. Oh, we just lost the E4. Ah, but they just lost their action 10. So that's good news in one sense. We exchanged tanks, but, well, we lost them a heavy tank or a tank destroyer for a medium. And in fact, actually, they've lost their EBR as well. So now they are going to be in difficult trouble. Rounds out on this bush. No joy on that. You can see the enemy appears to be mounting a strong defense around the eastern area of their cap area. There are some hills there where you can actually put tanks, which will actually do a lot of damage. And they can protect themselves by coming down the edge of the uh, hill. It's just that where that tree is to the left, to the right, rather. Well, he just fired one in on the last spot where an enemy tank was spotted. Okay, he's now looking at where the FE4005 was, the Hesh Barn. That's the spot where I think they're probably going to be defending from. It's on that little hill there. Rounds out. Okay, that probably would have done some damage. Now, the thing about this RT is you don't get a whole lot of shells. Only 20 shells in a game. So it is entirely possible you could run out of shells uh, because of the weight and the rate and speed that it reloads. So I said, the standard reload, 30.68 seconds. You can see Baseman's got 25.95 seconds as his reload time. Okay, he's looking at the minimap. We can see where the Object 261 was last seen. Fires one in, and... Oh, the 261! One of them has been spotted now. Okay, so we're still in reload. But it's very likely that guy's not going to move from that spot. Okay, he's... The griller on the enemy team just took out our Yudas 1516. He's looking to get some payback. Now, the scores are even at the moment, but the enemy does have more hit points than us. They've got just under 7,000. We've only got 4,202. But we do have the same number of guns. The difference is the enemy team still has two RTs. We've got only one left. Now, he's looking at the spot where that 261 was last seen. He's more than likely still there. But there's the hash barn. He just took a hit, and he's down low. Let this one go in, and it could be a splash kill. Rounds out. It is a direct hit, and he wipes out the hash barn. That's a useful kill, and it's the only kill so far for the base man. Okay, we've got a couple of enemy tanks have moved over this side of the map. We've only got the Gorilla 15, depending on this side. Because, of course, our guys have actually moved up the by the east route. Now, can he get a shot? This is dangerous. We might get spotted by this Gorilla 15. Oh, well, he got some splash, and that's going to upset the Gorilla. And the enemy just killed our Progetto 65. Both enemy RTs are now out of the game. We've got a one tank advantage. They've only got the Leopard, the Gorilla, and they've got a Strip 103. Was it a strip? It is a strip 103B. Oh, he's up on the heights. Okay, this is useful because Base Man can do this. He can penetrate the armor of a strip because they've only got 30 millimeters and he's got much more pen than that. Rounds out. Oh, RG said no. And the shell went to one side, but he did pick up damage assist and track assist and stun assist. And the Striv has gone. The Bat Chat got him. Okay, so we're reloading. There's only two enemies left, but there's three on Baseman's team. Of course, Artie is a force multiplier. Because, of course, it stuns the enemy when they don't want to be stunned and makes it easier for your teammates to get the kill. 
things, being cautious by using the terrain to his advantage, staying unseen from the enemy, using the ground, the low ground to advance and get into a position where he can start firing at the enemy. We don't know where the Leopard and the Gorilla have gone, actually. They might have actually scarpered already, trying to find the arty, and then suddenly found out, of course, that Baseman's no longer there. And now we've got the Leopard. Okay, so he's come back. The shot rounds out. Oh, he boxed us. We've only got five rounds left. He managed to fool us on that occasion. And now we're down to two left on both teams. But Baseman's now really going to have to do it to, to get this one to work. His teammate is the Striv 103B. Now, what can he do with this Leopard? Lines it up ahead of his path. Rounds out. Oh, he got a direct hit. The shell went long. Even though he got a bit of a rescue bloom, the shell went long and went right up the Leopard's rear. He didn't get a penetrating shot, but he did get 353 hit points. It doesn't make the Leopard a one kill, but you know the fact is the Striv 103B is a very powerful tank destroyer with a fast firing 105 millimeter gun. Rounds out again. Oh, he got him! He got a penetrating shot on the Leopard's rear. Oh, he should call himself a proctologist. He certainly put that one up the guy's rear. If there are any kiddies listening, uh, let your parents explain that one. Okay, now the only remaining enemy is to our left. Okay, we're loaded. We're ready to go. We're manually aiming. Oh! 346 hit points. It stuns our teammate, but it reduces the gorilla to a one shot, and now we can ram kill him. Oh, the gorilla's not going to like this. He kills our teammate in the strip, but now he's a ram kill or a splash kill for us. All we've got to do is ram him, and he gets him! Artie wins again! As you can tell, I'm rather excited when Artie wins a battle because I'm an Artie player myself. So therefore, I love it when an Artie comes out on top this way. He got a first class tank of Waste Man from Hell. He should have got an ace tanker, actually, to be honest. But uh, a first class is very good all the same. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this game. He got 12. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle. His win eight from that game, 4,862, which is super unicum standard and a lot more. And let's have a look at the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the object 140 on his team with 4,110 hit points of damage. Second highest damage went to the Gorilla 15 on their team with 3,911. And the third highest damage on the team turned out to be, yes, base man from hell, 3,904. The highest scorer on the enemy team was there, Leopard 1, who got a confederate in 3,721. When it came to kills, the high scorers were the Object 140, the Batchat 25 ton, who managed to get a Piscuchius as well, so he killed both enemy arty. Four kills also went to the Leopard 1 on the enemy team. And three kills in second place goes to Baseman from Hell all on his own because nobody else got three kills. And two kills went to the T-124 on his team, the Gorilla 15 and the STP-1 on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, He's actually in second place because the Object 140 managed 983, Baseman got 938, and just behind him by three experience points was the Batch at 25 ton. He fired 18 rounds. He only had two rounds left at the end of the game, and even if the Gorilla had managed to escape his clutches as terms the Ram, he probably would have shotgunned him very mo moments later uh, because I'm pretty sure he would have beaten the reload on that Gorilla as well. Seven direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot, and 15 splash. Of course, we saw the penetrating shot. It was that uh, leopard. He shot him right up the rear, and yeah, it went right through. 3,904 hit points of damage, of which 3,419 were at more than 300 meters. Obviously, the close work was the shots he made on the enemy gorilla right at the end of the game, and of course, then the ram kill. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, three were killed, 
451 hit points of damage assistance, that was track assistance, and 321 hit points of stun of 13 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 12,124 credits from that game, and he got 7 bonds because it was tier 10, and 4,221 experience points as well. So a very good ending to the battle for Base Man from Hell, last man alive, and he saved his team right at the end. Uh, I think a lot of people would have been thinking, oh no, the, uh, the, the his teammate in the strip's gone down, but nope, Base Man's just going to go for it. He is going to take out the enemy no matter what. He's not going to let um, his teammates down. He wants to win. Let's have a look at the second replay. The second replay is on the cliff map and we're on the north spawn and you're looking at an object 261 with three marks of excellence. That's because it's being driven by Oxidor of Olim. Game on. Well, this should be very interesting. An RT plane with three marks. Yeah, they've been around the houses a lot. They know how to use their RT. I mean, even players with one mark of excellence, I think uh, Baseman has one mark of excellence, he can still get magnificent shots with his RT. And let's see how Oxidor can do. Okay, he's ready to go. He's pre-aimed at the spot where he expects one of the enemy tanks to go up. Yeah, one more than one of the light tanks try to make their way up the hill, because of course it does give a big advantage to the enemy team to actually get uh, tanks up the hill. Because if they do, then obviously they can spot where all the bar tanks have gone to. But we've got a couple of enemy tanks here who are trying to occupy the donut. Now, fires the round in. Right up the rear of that Brigetto. He would have felt that. And Oxidor's changed position to avoid counter battery. Now there's only one RT on either team. The enemy team's got a T92 HMC. Okay, Batchat's backing away because he knows what's coming. If he stays out in the open, he's more than likely going to get hurt. We've got an EBR 105. And there's the TVP. Rounds out the TVP. Well, he gets some splash for 164. And again, changing position. Now, the problem with this position here is that sometimes the enemy can look out over from the donut and see if there are any RT firing from this position. He might pass that information on to his uh, his teammate with the other RT to try and take us out. Rounds out. Well, more splash damage, 106 this time. I think he was hoping to try and catch the side of the EVR, but the good news is that those guys are stunned. And whilst they're stunned, they're not less effective. Oh, now he can possibly take that Viz 55 out of the game with one shot. Oh, no, somebody else got there before us, the Strip 103B. But there is another tank there. It's actually the EBR. Now, he's quickly going to the other side. He keeps turning around. Okay, enemy tanks have been spotted up in the sniper's nest. And that's always a good shot up there because you might hit one or two or even three enemy vehicles. Well, he splashed the Leopard 1, managed to get 231, and he got some track assist because the guy got shot by one of our teammates. There's also a Leopard 1 apparently been seen on the very cliff edge near where our teammates are. Now he's doing the forward spotting for his enemy for his teammates. I'm gonna put another round in there. Rounds out. That's going to stir things up in the sniper's nest. They won't be happy if they're constantly getting shelled. But there's a lot more enemy tanks now on the uh, donut. Okay, he's now looking in the donut way. You notice this enemy tank has managed to make his way along 268 version 4. Oh, he got a hit. Direct hit. For 196 but that guy is getting rather close and our guys are redeploying to try and get rid of him oh that was a good shot there after we stunned him he just took a hit from an i think one of our teammates up on the uh, upper above us the gorilla 15. okay ebr fire blind but he got a direct hit he anticipated how far away the EBR was going to move, put the shell in there, even blind, he still managed to get a hit, 
And the guy's missing quite a few hit points already. Okay, he's not happy because, of course, EBRs are much happier when they can move about freely, but uh, he can't move about freely at the moment. That makes him a vulnerable target. Rounds out the TV. Oh, it's the Progetto 65. He got a direct hit and a sizzle. Always love that sizzle when you get that notification that the shell went off against the side of the hull. If you've ever seen any pictures of a tank that got hit by HE, they're speckled in the tiny amounts of explosive that try to peck at the hull. And you can see one of the enemy tanks is pushing one of those wrecks around. I don't know which one it is, but now we've got a hedge barn up there. This could be a penetrating shot. Rounds out. Well, he managed to dodge the shell. But he did take some damage. He is stunned. And now he's taking more stun assist. Okay, going back to the donut. It was the Jaeger that's been pushing that wreck around. It's the wreck of the Viz 55. Okay, we're going to go back and see if we can get this Hesh Barn. Rounds out. Looks good to me. We can't see the target, but... Okay, we've got the side of a Jaegeru. It'd be nice if we had some premium rounds at the moment to be able to pump a, an armor piercing through the side. It'd be even nicer if Wargaming gave armor piercing shells for RT the correct value they should have. Oh, he got a kill! He got a blind kill on the EPR 105! He correctly surmised the guy was going to be there milling around in the same spot and he just blew him up. We're one up on the enemy now. The Jaeger has got his impromptu armor, which is going to be a, a problem for him. It's going to be a problem for, for uh, Oxidor as well because he's got to try and miss that hill and get the side of the Jaeger. Gets a direct hit. Hasn't slowed the Jaeger down, so he's still moving. But he's very obvious because you don't get zombie tanks in World of Tanks. Whenever you see a, a dead tank moving, it's usually because someone is pushing it. You can see where the shell impacted on the side of the vehicle. That yellow mark, that's the impact point. He's almost loaded. Going to do it again. Bounce out again. And another direct hit. More stun assist. Two and a half K stun assist. I'm going to worry about that 60 TP. Now we do have some fire support from an STB-1 who's above us and to our left at the moment. But now we've got the Hesh Barn on the enemy side of the map. He's just taken some bad damage. Round... Oh, not yet. Rounds out now. Oh, that hit his rear. 314 hit points. He got the hull of the... Uh, Hesh Barn, which, as you know, is a Centurion. Now, these columns could be a bit of a problem. I'm not sure if that 60 TP actually knows. He's headed down into that northwest corner, but there's nobody down there. Okay, we've got a Leopard 1 being righted by the RT. And, well, the RT took some damage. The STB-1's come down to help us. We're three up on the enemy now. They've only got three left. They're RT, the Leopard 1, and the 60 TP. Oh, now that's annoying. We lost the Udas 1516. Taken out by the Leopard 1. We're not fully dialed in yet, so we can't go for that, but he fires in. I think the 60 TP is now about to be wiped out. If the Gorilla 15 will do the honours if uh, either that or the STB-1. Got no shot because, of course, he's just in defilade at the moment. That that ground is actually... Uh, the high ground's obstructing our field of fire. Oh, the Leopard goes down to an E-900. And the 60 TP goes down to our ST... Oh, no, he's killed us, this STB. Okay, so we're going to have to go in there. Because it's only the Gorilla 15 left, but we could take out that 60 TP with one ram. But we're going to get spotted, which means we're probably going to attract arty fire. 
Now, if we jump on this 60 TP, this could be fun. Hello, it's us. <laughs> and he survives. Oh, can we see that one again, please? Let's see that one again. Instant action replays. One of the favorites of our channel. We do love seeing this. Okay. He's gone to the overhead view to get a better perspective. He's aiming. He's aiming. The 60 TP suddenly realized too late. And we nail him. The 60 TP shell went straight into our tracks. Now, RT Fire is bound to be on the way in. Yep. Oh, close. Close, but no Monica. Yes, no cigar on that one. And now there's only one enemy left. It is the T92 HMC. We know where he is. He's actually at the bottom of that hill. And our guys are now just getting ready for the coup de grace. If I was him, I would go behind the rocks as well to give him a bit of protection. Either that or he's behind the bushes. Almost loaded. Oh, there he is. He actually moved. Again, he's trying to use the terrain to his advantage. But the Grilla 15 shuts him down, and that's the end of the game. That T92 HMC came very close to wiping out Oxidor with his shot towards the end of that game because he left Oxidor on only nine hit points at the end. Yes, the damage he actually suffered from the ram on the 60 TP to take him out of the game did take away some of Oxidor's health. But that T92 nearly took it all away at the end, but he still managed to get something out of it. So let's have a look at the score. Well, that was an ace tanker game for Oxidor. He managed to get a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in that game. He managed to get 15, and he also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win eight was 4,774. It's very unusual to see an arty getting a shell proof, but what actually happened was that 60 TP fired a 152 millimeter round, which hit the tracks of the um, of the Object 261. And of course, that's a 750 alpha. So, yes, he actually, in, with one shot, he managed to get a shellproof medal. So I suppose he should have send a letter of congratulations or a little message of congratulations to the 60TP for giving him um, an extra medal on top. Anyway, let's have a look at the team scores. Well, the highest damage in this game actually went to the Grilla 15 on their team with 4,644 hit points. Second highest damage went to the Heshbarn on the enemy team with 4,601. So that guy sitting up in the sniper's nest was doing a lot of damage. Third highest damage in the game went to Oxidor with 4,074 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, the highest scorer was the Super Conqueror, who got three kills in the game. Two kills went to Oxidor to the E100, the 60 TP on the, his own team, and on the enemy team, their Heshbarn, their EBR 105, and the Progetto 65 all got two kills. And when it came to base XP, only one player over a thousand, and that is Oxidor. He got 1,003. The next highest score being the Super Conquer with 948, and 874 went to the STB1. So at least he got the top in one of the columns, but he had a great game. He fired 18 rounds. So again, just like in the previous game, they were two rounds spare at the end. Eight direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot, which I suspect might be one of the tanks that he killed, the EBR. Yes, the one he got with a blind kill actually did penetrate the EBR, wipe him out altogether. Well, that's what we like. We like to see an EBR 105 taken out by an RT uh, who completely devastates him with a penetrating shot. That's always nice. He also got 21 splashes on the enemy. Even with 18 shells, he got 21 splashes because he was hitting multiple tanks that were sitting up in the sniper's nest. 
4,074 hit points of damage, of which 4,050 were at more than 300 meters, which means he did 24 hit points of damage when he jumped on top of the 60 TP and finished his game and took his uh, second kill. He got uh, one hit received from the enemy. It was a non-penetration. It was a 152 millimeter round that hit the tracks. And one hit by way of splash damage came from the T-92, tried to nail him, left him on nine hit points. 750 hit points of damage blocked by armor. 10 enemy vehicles were damaged, two were killed, 493 hit points of damage assistance, and 2,413 hit points of stun assist off 18 stuns. And that's where he got the ace tanker. Now, he did come out of the game with a small loss, only 2,094 credits, but it was worth it. He also got seven bonds and 1,504 experience points altogether. So two absolutely brilliant games, uh, an ace tanker for Oxidor or the first class and the last kill of the game for the base man from hell, who's the last man standing. And I think you both agree that they were brilliant games it's a pity that base man didn't get an ace tanker in in theory you know it was down to the fact that he didn't get a whole lot of stun assist whereas he did get a lot of actual damage if he got a bit more stun assist i think he probably would have got the ace as well but it was a, a very funny ending it's always nice to see a ram kill for the win and of course uh for oxidor it was very nice as well to see a ram kill on top of a heavy tank uh, yes, I don't think the uh, the 60 TP quite anticipated that at the end of the game he would go out to an RT jumping on top of him. Yes, that's always a laugh. I hope you enjoyed both of those replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.